This is Will Buchanan broadcasting live. I mean taped. And I'm not really broadcasting. It's more on demand on the internet. On the Walk for Liberty. It's day 113 on the Walk for Liberty. August 21st, 2008. Brooke has been really on the ball with setting up interviews for me. Earlier this week, I was interviewed by a lady from the Fallon County Times. And then yesterday, when she went by the Bowman Visitor Center and told the lady there about our walk, the lady immediately called the local Bowman newspaper. And I had an interview with the editor today. Unfortunately, neither of the two papers is online and will be out of both of their coverage areas by the time they're published. Also while at the visitor center, Brooke picked up a Yellowstone Trail guide. I learned from it that we've actually already been following the Yellowstone Trail since about Forsyth, Montana, and will continue on it until near Minneapolis. I learned from the guide that the Yellowstone Trail was the first transcontinental highway through the northern tier of states. And not only that, but... It wasn't built by the government! I'd like to share with you a bit about the fascinating origin of the Yellowstone Trail. In 1912, a conference of businessmen was held at Ipswich, South Dakota under the leadership of Joseph W. Parmley. This group wanted to build a better road between Ipswich and Aberdeen, South Dakota, which was 26 miles away. That endeavor began the Yellowstone Trail, which soon stretched from Plymouth Rock to Puget Sound, and was the first transcontinental automobile highway through the northern tier of states. It thrived because of the cooperation of thousands of grassroots supporters. The Yellowstone Trail was an important factor in the transition from railroad travel to auto travel. The popularity of the auto was not to be denied, but governments did not support the building of roads. I find that bit really interesting and ironic. It was up to private trail organizations like the Yellowstone Trail Association to get connected roads built in order to help farmers get to market, to encourage tourism, and to open minds to the possibility of transcontinental auto travel. What? So it hasn't been governments that have built and maintained roads since the very beginning of time itself? Indeed. What organizations have more of an incentive to build and maintain efficient roads than businesses do in order to transport their products quickly and efficiently? Most people today, however, have been brainwashed into thinking that only governments have the capacity to build highways, not to mention transcontinental highways. And yet, it was a private organization which built the Yellowstone Trail all the way across America. I wonder how it was that governments did become the de facto organizations to maintain the roads then. My guess is that they saw it as too good of an opportunity and a money-making scheme to pass up. That they used their monopoly power and brute force to take over them. And then once they had control, of course, they needed lots of tax dollars to maintain them. That's just my guess, though. But the next time you think about government roads, remember the Yellowstone Trail. Tomorrow, I'll talk about how a private business could go about the process of building a major highway, or railroad line for that matter, without using government eminent domain, even today. I walked just over 12 miles today. Here's my location. This is Will Buchanan for blog.walkforliberty.com, signing off.